In order to remove the camshaft, you're going to have to make some room in the front. So you're going to have to remove the radiator, radiator fan, and move the AC condenser. Start by getting rid of this plastic panel. Take a small flat, flat blade screwdriver. Pry right, these up. I'm out of there. Panel, pull it off, set that aside. You don't necessarily have to remove the grill, but I find it makes it easier. So these four 10 millimeter bolts, get rid of those. Now you have to pop off these spring clips, and the way you remove them is by inserting a flat blade screwdriver in that little slot. Insert the screwdriver and pry down on the tab and they just pull out and you give it a little bit pry a little bit up on the bottom just insert a small flat blade screwdriver in that slot pry down pull out. Sometimes you gotta pry it up on the bottom too. Just do that for the rest of these clips. There's four more along the bottom. For the ones you can't get into the slot, just press down on the tab from above. Once you've got all those spring clips out, then there's these plastic clips on the bottom of the bumper cover. Just press those in, and then you gotta kinda shove the grill forward. towards the radiator, pull it off. It's the most unintuitive grill attachment design, but it's what you have to deal with with these trucks. I removed the hood latch assembly just so it's not sitting there stabbing me while I'm removing the radiator. Out of this clip here, disconnect it from its electrical connector. And get rid of those two 10 millimeter bolts in the bottom. Sling that off somewhere. Pull out. Have to remove the radiator fans. Start by prying up on this upper radiator hose clip. Pull that out of there. I get rid of the upper radiator hose. Get at this spring clamp. and get the radiator side. Remove this 10 millimeter bolt that holds this spring bracket on, the trans cooler line. And this bolt kind of stays with the bracket unless somebody took it off before. Little thingy in there. Pop this cooler hose. Pop this coolant hose out of its bracket. Set it somewhere. Remove the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the fan shroud in, one on each side.
And there's another spring bracket with a 10 millimeter bolt for the lower trans cooler line. Disconnect the electrical connections to the fans. Push this middle tab in, pull it out. Same thing over here. Fan shout has a super convenient grab handle here. So just grab it, pull it up and out. Now you have to remove the trans cooler lines. They're held in with special spring clips. So start by popping this plastic cover off, slide it back, same thing for the lower one, Just gently. Now they make this special tool to get those out, but I find the special tool to be a pain in the ass, so I just use a right angle pick. And if you see, there's these open ends of the spring clip, take the pick and pry them outward. And then, once you've got it one leg out, just grab hold of that and pull it out. And that's what it looks like. Don't lose them. And after you pull the trans line, just take the spring clip and put it back in there. And then when you're ready to reinstall the line, it just clicks in, you don't have to mess with the spring clip anymore. Okay, same thing for the bottom. In fact, on this one I'll use the special tool, just to show you what a pain in the ass it is. It's, uh, use a 3 8 side, insert it in there, it's kind of like wiggle it to spread the spring clip ends. You really gotta force it in there, it's a pain in the ass. It takes you longer to use the special tool than it does to just pick it out of there with a pick. And just pull the line out. Eventually. I just gave up and switched back to the right angle pick. Let's find the open end. There. Get the pick under there, pull it out. Couldn't be simpler. Now, pull the trans glue line, trans fluid's gonna come out. Make sure your drip pan is in place. And just take the spring clip and put it back in place. It doesn't necessarily have to go exactly in the way it came out. Just as long as these little bendy parts go into a groove on the cooler lug. And do not attempt to turn these cooler lugs with a wrench because you'll never get them to seal back and you'll have to replace the radiator. Now remove the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the radiator in. It's two at both at the top, one on each side. Disconnect this coolant hose from the overflow tank. Just squeeze this spring clamp back, pull that off, okay, make sure everything's clear of the radiator, like these trans cooler lines, I'm just going to pull this out with the hoses attached, this doesn't matter, I want to disconnect the mass airflow sensor so it doesn't get damaged, okay, sort of unstick the radiator from its mounts they get stuck to the thing there lean the radiator back and then pull it up mm -hmm. 
Watch out for any wasp nests that are attached to it. There we go. Right. Get the power steering pump and alternator bracket out of the way. Thankfully we already unbolted that when we thought we were just doing lifters. Now you have to remove the water pump. It's held in with six 10 millimeter bolts. Slam those off. One's gonna come out. Forgot to mention, you have to disconnect these heater hose lines. They're just held on with spring clips. Take a 3 8 ratchet, insert it into the AC belt tensioner, bear down on that, and remove the belt. Now you have to remove the harmonic balancer. Now you have to remove that center bolt in the harmonic balancer. Stop the crank from rotating. Use one of these pulley holder tools and go in to the back of the balancer. Just find your way in there. There we go. And just find where it locks in. Hold that there. Rotate until the pulley holder tool rests against the AC compressor. AC compressor bracket. But if your impact is powerful enough, you shouldn't need all that. Now to remove this balancer, you have to use a gear puller. You can't use a standard harmonic balancer puller. If you look at the back of the balancer, it's got flats where the gear puller teeth are supposed to grab. You could also use a Chrysler style balancer puller. You could rent these from any AutoZone or O'Reilly's or any auto parts store. You can also rent the gear puller too. Either one, whichever one you prefer. Use the pulley holding tool to keep the crank from rotating while you crank down on the gear puller. There we go. Just rotate till you find a stopping point. I usually just stick it on the frame so it holds itself. Just don't pinch a brake line or something. And then just slowly turn the forcing screw in. If your gear puller bottoms out before the balancer comes all the way off, just take a quarter inch extension and insert it into the crank where the crank bolt's supposed to go. And that'll give your gear puller kind of like an extension. I'm using the Chrysler puller because it's beefier than the gear puller I have on hand. Once you can wiggle it, just pull it off. Now you can start removing the timing cover bolts. They're all 10 millimeter. Start by disconnecting this cam position sensor. Just pull that tab out and just push it down. Comes out. Now you can start removing the bolts. This bolt right here is kind of hard to get to because of the AC compressor bracket, but you don't have to remove the AC compressor. Just bear down on the belt tensioner, get it out of the way, and take a quarter inch 10 millimeter socket and get out of that. And then just turn it out with your fingers. Now you have to remove this plastic wiring harness duct that runs along the bottom 
front of the oil pan. There's a 10 millimeter bolt on the driver's side. It's hard to see. Let's remove that. Let's get that bolt out and then this harness just drops down. On the bottom of the timing cover, there's two 10 millimeter bolts. One on the left side of the engine, one on the right side of the engine. So remove them. Now take a pry tool and gently pry the timing cover away from the engine. If you look down here, there's a notch where a pry bar is supposed to go. And there we go. Make sure all the lifters are removed before you attempt to remove the camshaft. Now rotate the engine until the number one cylinder is at top dead center, like this. And then look very carefully behind the oil pump. There is a mark on the crank side timing gear. It's a little dot that notes that this is the indicator tooth on the sprocket. And you have to rotate the cam gear in such a way that its timing mark lines up with the crankshaft sprocket. If this mark is up here, then just rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees and that brings it down here. The camshaft runs at half the speed of the crankshaft. So line those two marks up and then remove the cam gear bolt. Take a 15 16th socket, impact, remove the cam bolt. Just be gentle with the impact so it doesn't fly off. Remove the cam bolt. Now just carefully pull the cam gear off the cam. And then just pull the chain out from around the sprocket. Get rid of that. These don't have chain tensioners, so you don't have to worry about anything snapping back. Just let that rest in there. And there's your cam sprocket. Set that aside. Use a T40 Torx bit and remove these four Torx bolts that hold the camshaft thrust plate on. So they're off, just get hold of the plate, grab it, pull it out. Now take the camshaft sprocket bolt, just thread it in there a couple of turns. Use that to pull the cam out. And be very careful pulling the cam out because you don't want to damage the cam bearings. Just work it out of there. Try not to spin it around too much, just kind of if you can't get it to pull out, just work it up and down. Because if you try to spin it, one of these lobes might dig into the cam bearing. At this point, take the bolt out. About an inch to spare between the block and the AC condenser. And there's the culprit. Cam bearings look good. Very normal. Here's our GM direct camshaft. Okay, now we're ready to install this. Now since this is a roller cam, you don't have to do any kind of cam break-in procedure. 
like you would with a flat tappet cam. So you don't need any molly lube on these cam lobes. But you do need to oil the hell out of this thing. So as you're installing it, dribble oil all over everything. Line up the cam with the first cam journal. Slide that in there. Coat the next journal with oil. Insert these very carefully. Very gentle. You don't want to damage the cam bearings. And try not to let the lobes hit the cam bearings because the lobes will dig in to that soft bearing material. And never ever rotate the cam while the lobe is touching a bearing. Okay, at this stage we're going to have to get our cam bolt because we need a little bit of extra room to grab. There we go. Now the final journal insertion. go. Cam is in. Just spin the cam, make sure it rotates smoothly and it's not binding. This one feels very good. Perfect actually. If it is binding, then you probably have some cam bearing issues. Now you have to install the cam thrust plate. Make sure you're using a new thrust plate because it has the seal on the back. It's not reusable. Line up the thrust plate. Start the four Torx bolts. Just hand tighten them in until they're all in. T40 Torx, just snug them down, don't torque them down yet. And it should go without saying, if you're doing any kind of internal engine work, that torque specs are critically important. So, if you don't have a torque wrench, don't even bother. You can rent these from most auto parts stores. Torque the camshaft thrust plate bolts down. Go start from top to bottom, then side to side, and then just go back over them and make sure they took torque. Now line up the mark on the camshaft sprocket, timing mark right there, with the timing mark on the crank sprocket. Rotate the camshaft to roughly where this dowel pin is going to land, with that mark lined up. So that's right about where it's at now. Now insert the cam sprocket, wrap it in the timing chain, if you find it lands about a tooth off, just wiggle the chain until it's right, just like that. Skip a tooth. Make sure the chain's not getting hung up on the chain guides. Line it up with the cam's dowel pin and slide it on just like that. 
and make triple, triple, triple sure that these timing locks are absolutely in line because there is no wiggle room whatsoever. If that's even a tooth off, this engine will not run right. Now you have to install the camshaft sprocket bolt. But before you tighten the cam bolt, give a couple of rotations on the crank. Spin it around and then land at the timing marks. Just make sure they still line up. There shouldn't be any problems. Now there is no good place to hold this pulley to stop it from turning while you torque this bolt down. So you have to get a little bit creative. What I usually do is just tighten the crankshaft balancer bolt with an impactor or whatever. And then just take a ratchet with a 15 16 socket, jam it up on the cross member down there. And that stops it from turning. And torque this bolt down in two stages. The first stage is down to 55 foot-pounds. For the second stage, you're going to need a torque angle gauge. You can get these from most auto parts stores, probably around 15 bucks. Set up your torque angle gauge so the stopper hits somewhere inside. Take it down, 50 degrees. You gotta use a lot of torque on these. <clears throat> Bang, 50 degrees. And get the balancer bolt back out. If you have these old gaskets stuck to the engine, pull them off. Take a paper towel or a shop rag or something and wet it with brake cleaner. Clean up all these gasket surfaces, especially the oil pan gasket. So we're going to have to use RTV on that. And then just do a wipe down of the timing cover gasket surface. These don't have to be perfectly clean because it's a silicone gasket. Wipe down the water pump gasket surfaces. Those are also silicone gaskets, so they don't have to be perfectly clean. They don't have to be perfectly oil free. But the oil pan gasket you want to be absolutely free of oil because RTV does not like oil. The new timing cover gasket set comes with a new balancer seal or crankshaft seal. So let's install that. Take a screwdriver and a hammer and hammer out the old seal. They're not very tight in there. Take a little bit of engine oil. Lubricate the inner and outer sections of the seal. Now place the seal in the timing cover bore. Just loosely. Usually you can just press it in with your palms. But if you find if you can't get it in with your palms, use something like a rubber mallet and a block of wood and just beat it in there. But they usually just press in. Just make sure the seal is completely flat and even. Spray some brake cleaner on a shop rag or something. Use it to clean up the gasket surfaces, timing cover, especially the bottom. take a razor blade and remove any old RTV from the factory. Now remember you're using a razor blade against aluminum so try not to gouge the aluminum. Now take the brake cleaner soaked rag and clean the gasket surface off the rest of the way. Before you set the new gasket on there Take some black RTV and hit the corners where the oil pan meets the block. Each side. Put about a, about a quarter inch bead or so. And then set 
the new gasket into that RTV. Like that. Now run a thin layer of RTV black on the bottom edge of the timing cover. Since the oil pan gasket's not new, we want to make sure it seals. But go really thin on this. Don't go crazy. Reason I'm putting it on the timing cover instead of the gasket itself is because you can't get under the oil pump. Okay, once the bottom is evenly coated with a thin layer, very thin layer, stick it and put it on the engine. Slide it under the oil pump. Start a couple of bolts. Don't tighten anything yet. Then install the two bottom bolts that thread up through the oil pan, but don't tighten them obviously. You tighten the two bottom oil pan bolts last because you don't want anything to impede the alignment. So just leave those backed out a couple of threads. Just thread in the rest of the bolts now. Snug down the two bottom oil pan bolts first, but don't tighten them. Just snug them down to where they'll pull the timing cover down towards the seal. Just snug it down until you see the RTV start to ooze out a little. Now start torquing down the rest of the bolts. Start with this hard to reach bolt. And remember the trick. Get the belt tensioner out of the way. that. Torque spec on these bolts is only 18 foot pounds, so you can lay that with your hand. Torque is not terribly critical here. Just don't go crazy torquing them down like a nut. Alright, and then go to the opposite side. Take that bolt. Go up, next bolt, break that down, then to the opposite side. Up, opposite side. Up, next. go over them again and then finally crank down the two oil pan bolts go back over them and that's it timing covers on now reattach that lower wiring harness clip you see this little plastic dowel it pilots into a hole in the oil pan so, start with that, put that dowel pin in there, and then put this side bolt in. Not the easiest thing in the world to see. Take that down. Reconnect the cam position sensor. Before you attempt to install the balancer, Lubricate the inside of it with engine oil and the outside. Why not? Since these are press fit, it helps it slide on. Just place the balance around the nose of the crankshaft. There is a special tool made specifically for LS motors to install the balancers because the kits that come from most auto parts stores don't work. I just use a slightly longer M16 by 2.0 bolt and then once it's to a point where I can thread at least four turns onto the crankshaft with the original balancer bolt then switch to the original balancer bolt and then you can draw it in the rest of the way but after you're done with that you must use a new balancer bolt these are not reusable 
So set up your pulley holding tool on the back of the balancer. Jam it up against the frame rail here. It does come close to this line here, but it doesn't hit it. It comes very close. If you want, you can put a block of wood or something against the frame rail just to raise it up away from that line, but never hits it. Just hold the tool to the back of the balancer because the <clears throat> balancer is going to be moving while you're tightening this bolt. And I always tighten these by hand. I don't trust impact on these. So if something's going sideways, then you're going to destroy your crank at rapid fire. So just take the time and tighten it by hand. Once the balancer bolt starts getting hard to turn, switch to your large click type torque wrench and torque it down to 240 foot pounds. Make sure you're doing this with the old balancer bolt. Because once you torque it to 240 foot pounds, that's just to seat the balancer on the nose of the crank. And then you back that bolt out and then you come in with a new bolt. Once you hit 240 foot pounds, the balancer is seated. And I'll take an impact wrench or something and remove the bolt. Now I'll take hold of the new bolt, get it out of there. You notice that the new bolt has this sealer stuff on it. Don't add any oil or any kind of lubrication to it. It's designed to bite in and create a perfect seal between the balancer and the nose of the crankshaft. Now take the new bolt down, first stage, 37 foot-pounds, and take your torque angle gauge, and you have to give it 140 degrees of rotation for the second pass. These angle gauges are notoriously difficult to read on these. Unless you remove the AC condenser, or set up some kind of mirror Degrees. 70. It's 90. Once I hit 90, it's the dial back to zero. And then just go for 50. Yeah, these are pretty tight. That's a very large bolt to stretch. There we go. That's 50. Balancer's on.